What's up friend, Kelsey here from Seed and Sparrow Homestead. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I am bringing you a whole bunch of freezer breakfast meals. I want to stock my freezers again with some more heat and go, ready to eat convenience meals and get some healthier alternatives to what you can find in the freezer section at the store. So I'm trying to save some time by doing a whole bunch of recipes at once. I used to do this often, but I just got out of the habit of it. I think the last time I did it was back when I was expecting my son and he'll be two this month. So it's been a hot minute and I wanna get back into the habit of it. It's so nice to have these heat and go meals that I can just pull, throw in the oven, microwave if I need something super quick um, and have food ready to go for my family. So I'm just gonna jump into it today. My little guy is sleeping, so this is my nap time hustle. I never know how long he's going to sleep for. So I wanna get as much done as I can right now. Um, I did take yesterday to prepare uh, what I could, all of my meats are cooked and ready to go. I made some English muffins yesterday. I prepared like any of the produce extra add-ins and I have all of my pans out, ingredients out, so hopefully this just goes super smooth and is as organized as I can make it. So we're gonna jump right into our first recipe today, which is some quiche. All right, I got my oven preheated to 350. That's about the temp we're sticking to for most of our recipes today. I am gonna get working on my quiche. I'm also going to do my baked oatmeal. Those are the two that have the longest baking time so they can go into the oven together and then I can work on something that is not baked. So I have a base quiche recipe, like the egg mixture, which is six eggs, a half a cup of milk, a quarter cup of heavy cream, and I always add cheese, like a half cup to three quarter cup. I mean, you can add as little or as much as you want, but that's like my base recipe. And as always down in the show notes, I will include all of today's recipes. Um, and I always add in some sort of seasoning, usually just a pinch of the salt and pepper, but you can put whatever seasoning you want in it. Um, so that's my base. And then depending on what ingredients I have on hand for my extras determines like the variation of quiche that I'm making. My husband requested a cheesesteak quiche today. So that is the chipped beef steak, um, some peppers and onions and um, cheese, but I always add in the cheese anyway. So that's what we're making today. I'm gonna get that mixed up and over into my pie pan and then we're gonna start working on the baked oatmeal. This is going to be a crustless quiche. We are not fans of the end result after the crust has been frozen with the quiche. It always ends up soggy and mushy in our opinion. So not fans here, we forego the crust. So again, this was a six eggs, a half a cup of milk, a quarter cup of heavy cream, whatever seasonings you desire, and then any of the extra add-ins. I typically add about a cup to a cup and a half. And I am not a cook that typically measures things. I follow this loosely. Sometimes I'll add in more eggs, a little less milk. You really can't mess it up too bad. The consistency might just be a little bit different from time to time, but the recipe that I gave you is generally what I follow. I am adding in here some garlic powder and some onion powder for my seasonings along with some salt and pepper. And then like I said, this is going to be a cheesesteak quiche. So I have my chipped beef going in here and I'm gonna throw in some Cooper cheese. Typically I'm not a fan of processed cheese, but I had it on hand from something else and my husband loves it. So that's going in here, as well as some peppers from last year's garden that have been frozen. I'm just going to tear them into smaller pieces, throw them in here, and then pour my quiche mixture over top. Some other variations we use would be buffalo chicken, bacon and cheddar, mushroom and Swiss, spinach and feta. There's a whole bunch of different quiche variations that you can use. Now moving on to our baked oatmeal. I'm gonna make two loaf pans of this and I'm gonna make two different flavor variations. So I have my base recipe and then you can customize it however you want with whatever flavors you want. So I am going to actually experiment a little bit I will make sure to link the actual recipe for you all if you don't want to do these or don't have these other things to use in it. 
So instead of eggs, I have a lot of applesauce in my pantry to use up, so I'm going to substitute applesauce for the eggs the recipe requires. And instead of adding fresh fruit, I am still working on using up a lot of my jams and jelly, so I figured I would swirl those in instead of fresh fruit just to try and use them up. So I'm gonna get my base here mixed together with the applesauce substitute, and then once they're in the pans, I'm gonna go ahead and swirl in my jams, and then we're gonna get these two and the quiche into the oven. If you didn't know, you can substitute applesauce for eggs in baking. So for each egg that is required, you wanna add in a quarter cup of applesauce. If you're ever out of eggs, but you might have some applesauce in your pantry, you can go ahead and use that. Now I am making a double recipe here, so I put in one half cup of applesauce and four cups of milk. Four teaspoons of vanilla extract. A half a cup of honey. And one teaspoon of salt. I set my wet ingredients aside and I mixed up my dry, so I needed four cups of old-fashioned rolled oats. You can use the quick oats too, it doesn't really matter. Then I needed two teaspoons of baking powder, and I just threw in probably like a tablespoon's worth of cinnamon. Now, I messed this part up. I don't really know what I was thinking. I should have just mixed my dry ingredients and then divided it in two and put that in the pans and then poured my wet over top. By mixing them, um, I didn't really get equal parts of the oat mixture and the wet mixture into each pan. You'll see here when I go to pour them into the pans. Um, one of them got more liquid than the other. So don't do that. You just want to put your dry ingredients in first, then you can layer on some cut fruit if you're going to use fresh fruit, and then add in your liquid over the top. So now I am putting in my jams. I actually used apple butter for one, and for the other, I used some zucchini bread jam. Don't mind the... Uh seed starting mess in the back there. I'm in the thick of getting all of my seeds sewn and down in my grow room. So that's real life. Um, we're gonna start working on our waffles now. I am doing a triple batch of my pre-made ready mix. Um, I'll link that video for you below. You can go check that out. So I am just doing a triple batch of that and I'm actually going to divide that in half and make two different flavors. I am going to do a cheddar, chive, and bacon waffle and then just some plain waffles as well. And I'm also gonna do a banana waffle. I have a whole bunch of brown bananas here that need to get used up. So I'm gonna get that mix going and we're gonna get those into the waffle maker. Okay, like I said, this is my pre-made waffle and pancake mix that I grabbed off the shelf. So I have six cups of that in here. I added in one cup of melted butter and I will need five cups of milk. Cracking in six eggs here. If this wasn't going to be a savory mix, then I would probably add in some vanilla as well, but I am omitting that for now. And I'm just gonna start getting these into my waffle maker and working on other things while these cook. Moving on to the banana waffles. This is its own recipe. I am not using my pre-made waffle mix for this. So I am mashing up three overripe bananas. I'm going to add in a three quarter cup of buttermilk. You can also just use milk. Need two large eggs. a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and three tablespoons of melted butter. I'm 
adding in two tablespoons of brown sugar. I also went over how to make your own brown sugar in my last video, which I will link below. Now adding in a quarter teaspoon of salt along with some cinnamon, about a half a teaspoon or so. Then I'm gonna add in my dry ingredients. I need one and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and one half teaspoon of baking soda. I try and mix those up there on the top the best that I can before combining them with the wet ingredients rather than getting out another bowl and dirtying that. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix these all up really well and then as the waffle iron frees up, I will just keep on making all my waffles. So I have used up half of that first batch for plain waffles. Now I'm adding in the extras for my cheddar, chive, and bacon. So I probably put in about a quarter cup or so of chopped chives, about a cup's worth of cheese. This was actually Colby Jack and about four or five pieces of crumbled up bacon. Here's what they look like coming out of the waffle maker. These are really good. We don't eat anything on them, just plain. They're good on their own, but they're also really good to use as the bread portion of a breakfast sandwich. All right, in amidst everything else we're doing, I'm gonna keep working on waffles, and the things in the oven are almost done, so I'm going to get the next set of things that need to go into the oven ready. So next up, I'm going to work on my breakfast sandwiches and my sheet pan pancakes. If you've never made a sheet pan pancakes, you need to, they're life-changing. You don't have to stand over the stove and flip a million pancakes. You can just put them on a baking sheet you can mix and match flavors and then just cut them into nice little squares and you're good to go. So we're gonna work on getting that batter ready. And for the breakfast sandwiches, I want to um, mix up a bunch of eggs and put them on a sheet pan and I'm just gonna put them in the oven as well for the sandwiches. So I'm going to be checking waffles and working on those two things now. Again, I am using my pre-made pancake and waffle mix here, adding in two cups of milk, two eggs, and two tablespoons of melted butter. I am also going to add in some vanilla extract to this as well, about a teaspoon's worth. I have my cookie sheet here. I put on a piece of parchment paper and I also greased that parchment paper. I'm just going to pour all of my pancake batter on here and spread it out nice and even. Now you can certainly leave these plain or you can get a little creative with it and add some different toppings. Use up some jams and jellies and swirl them in. Some fresh fruit, chocolate chips, you name it. Some people like peanut butter. I used chocolate chips, apple butter, and some frozen blueberries. Our baked oatmeal is done, as well as the quiche. And boy, let me tell you, my house smelled good after this. It was nice to work to this aroma. I scrambled up about a dozen eggs, a splash of milk, and some salt and pepper for the breakfast sandwiches, and I am pouring that onto a parchment-lined cookie sheet. Doesn't matter if it doesn't all get filled up, but this is just an easy way to cook up the eggs. Moving on, I am going to do something that's geared more towards my kids, and I'm gonna make little egg cups for them. So I have this silicone um, cupcake tray here. I find it easier to get the little um, cups out of them. So all I'm gonna do, I have some tater tots here, and I'm gonna line the bottom of these like with two or three each in each of the little cups. And then I am going to shred some cheese and put a little bit on the top of each one. And I'm gonna make a little egg mixture. It's almost like a quiche, but not as much milk. So I'm just gonna 
I figure on one egg per cup about maybe a little less than that so I have 12 here maybe I'll do like nine or ten eggs and then um, just a splash of milk and then I pour that on top and bake this as is. I'm gonna put it on a cookie sheet though because it's really difficult to transport this without sloshing everywhere so I'm gonna work on that now. Make sure to grease your baking dish first. It's no fun trying to scrape egg out of these containers. So I'm just putting in my tater tots, some shredded cheese, and then I mixed up some eggs, splash of milk, and some salt and pepper, and I am just labeling that on top. They will rise a little bit, but not too much. Here is how those scrambled eggs turned out that we put on the baking sheet. So I am just going to divide this into 10 portions for my sandwiches. You can assemble these however you desire, whatever ingredients you want to use. So I have my egg, slice of cheese, and then a variation of meat. So I have some sausage and some bacon that I'm using today. And these are the English muffins that I made in my month's worth of bread items that I will link down below if you want to get the recipe for these English muffins and learn how to make them. I'm just going to wrap these up in some freezer paper and then each of these will go into a freezer bag as well so I can just pull them out easily as we need them. If you're not a fan of breakfast sandwiches using English muffins, in the same video where I show you how to make these, I also show you how to make some bagels and some tortillas, which are other great options for breakfast sandwiches. On to our last recipe, which is the Pop-Tarts. For the crust, I am using two cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of salt. Mixing that up first before adding in one cup of cubed cold unsalted butter. We're gonna mix this up until the butter is about the size of a pea and the mixture holds together nicely. Um, when you squeeze it in your hand, you can do this in a food processor. I find that it works just fine in my KitchenAid. You can also use a pastry cutter or even some forks. Next, I'm adding in a mixture of one egg, three tablespoons of milk, and one teaspoon of vanilla. Just going to mix this until it just comes together. I'm gonna flour my surface here and get this rolled out fairly thin, about an eighth of an inch. just took a pizza cutter and made some nice long strips trying to make rectangles about three inches by four inches give or take this is not an exact science you can make them into any shape that you want placing them on my parchment lined cookie sheet and then I am going to work on getting the fillings in these I am actually using up more of my 
jams and jellies, which if you've watched my pantry video, you've seen I have many to use up. So here I am using peach butter, and then I'm also going to use some strawberry rhubarb jam, which in hindsight wasn't a good idea because that one is a little bit runny and it just would not stay in place and ended up making an entire mess. So I'm not gonna use that one again. I did add in some fresh fruit as well and got the tops on these after putting in some egg wash to seal the top to the bottom. Just taking a fork to create a nice seal all the way around and a fun little pattern. egg wash the tops of these and get them into the oven. So despite these being pretty messy, they were pretty delicious. I wouldn't really call them Pop-Tarts though. Yeah, they do resemble a Pop-Tart, but I consider them more of like a hand pie. And honestly, when using the jams in these, they were really sweet. So it's not really something I'm gonna go for for breakfast. I mean, if you love really sweet things for breakfast, then by all means go for it. But this will just be a nice little treat for us. And then next time I make these for more of a breakfast thing, I'll just use some plain fruit. Now I don't plan on adding any icing to these. They are far too sweet, but you can add icing to them if you desire. If you're going to freeze them though, I would wait until they have thawed to add the icing. have it friend seven of our favorite tried and true breakfast freezer meals they don't take up a whole lot of time they're super delicious and really easy to make and they give you a better ready to go breakfast option than what you could find at the grocery store having these breakfast meals in the freezer helps you out when you're low on time ensures that you have good food to pull out for your family to eat when you just don't feel like cooking breakfast Maybe you want to sleep in a little bit longer because the kids were up a whole bunch last night and I'm talking about myself right now because that happened last night. You just can't go wrong with good convenience meals. All right, I have everything completed and ready to go in the freezer. So I just wanted to quickly go over how I store these things and how I reheat them. For a lot of them, I'm just using freezer bags, the pancakes, and the egg cups. Waffles are all just directly into the freezer bags. It makes for easy access if I only want one or two servings out of them. And the sandwiches here I have wrapped in a freezer paper. Sorry, my dishwasher's going and the kids are playing. Uh, the sandwiches are wrapped in freezer paper and then put into the bags. My baked oatmeal here, I have saran wrap down first and then foil over top. Same with the pop tart slash hand pies. The quiche is also wrapped first with saran wrap and then aluminum foil. So that's how they all go in there. Um, a lot of these things you can either reheat in the microwave or in the oven. Since everything is already cooked, you just need to heat it up. So typically I will pull these things out the night before I want to use them and then they're already completely thawed and I will just like pop them in the oven. These things here like the baked oatmeal and the quiche, um, 
they would go right into the oven like at 350 for maybe 15 minutes or so you just kind of check until you know the center is warm um, but the rest of these things will either go in a toaster oven or the microwave if I'm you know in a huge hurry I try not to use the microwave whenever possible so all of these things can just be heated up in the oven as well I do like to cover them though when they are being heated to kind of trap in the moisture so things don't get dried out um, but that's pretty much it if I miss something or if you have another question something more specific just drop it in the comments and I will be sure to get back to you Now I do want to make mention before you put these things in the freezer, make sure they have completely cooled off. You don't want to trap any moisture into these bags and containers. These will last for about two to three months in the freezer, although I know for us, we will eat them long before that. I hope you all enjoyed coming along with me today in the kitchen as we made these freezer breakfast meals. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you to all of you who are consistently engaging with all of my videos. We appreciate it so much. You are blessing our family by liking and commenting and sharing. It gets these videos out to more people and we are so grateful for you all. I hope you all have a wonderful, blessed week and I will see you next time. Take care.